Bukum, hear me little Jackie, no I've smoked me bucky, have a bit of cracky, till the boat comes in, dance to the daddy, sing to the mummy, dance. Hello, and welcome to Great Western. These are my thoughts, this is my appreciation of the classic 1970s drama, When the Boat Comes In, starring James Bolam. This does contain spoilers, so please be warned. On the 8th of January 1976, viewers to the UK's BBC One channel saw a new kind of drama. When the boat comes in was not like Upstairs Downstairs. Almost the entire cast of this show were working class characters who lived in desperate conditions. This story was not based around the landed gentry or Edwardian movers and shakers in the best London districts. This was gritty drama about the hopes and dreams of poor people. People so poor they would steal sheep to make a little money or dig holes in the floor of their lounge to find some pieces of coal. But it was also a tale of aspiration, and it arguably preempted the Thatcherite 1980s. The show is set just after World War I, and it centres around Sergeant Jack Ford, James Bolam's character. And it's also centred around the Seaton family. They all live in the fictional northeastern industrial town of Gallo Shield. And the show proved so popular that the BBC immediately commissioned a second series for the autumn of 1976. The writer was James Mitchell, himself a native of the northeast, and he oversaw two further series in 1977 and 1981. Series 1 to 3 have a very definite focus on the town of Gallashield and the Seaton family. A former mining family whose patriarchal head, Bill, is forced to retire from the pit due to an accident which leaves him paralysed. Long-suffering wife Bella has little choice but to go along with Bill's idea to open a shop in their front room. Bill and Bella eventually become quite wealthy and end up with a string of shops. Their frequent arguments and emotional confrontations form a compelling focus of the show. So in series one, a young sergeant, Jack Ford, who is played by the 40-year-old James Bolam, returns from the army and befriends the Seaton family. The show follows Jack's life as he acquires wealth, by fair means or foul, but he never forgets his roots, and several storylines concern how he provides for the poor, particularly those he is already friendly with via work or personal relationships. And it becomes clear that in Gallashield, Jack Ford knows a lot of people. From sheep stealing, to becoming the well-renumerated secretary of the Fitters' Union, we follow Jack in a classic rags-to-riches tale. Jack is clever, cunning even, having worked in military intelligence. And we slowly learn more and more about this compelling character, even though his motivations always remain something of a mystery. A capitalist who often speaks of getting on, Jack continues to fight for social justice in Gallashield, although he is frequently self-promoting and often profiting from his interventions on behalf of the poor. Many early storylines centre around the local shipyards, particularly the fictional Lewis Bishop. Sir Horatio Manners is the boss of this sh shipyard, and he is linked to Jack Ford by the war. Horatio's son died in Jack's arms at the Battle of the Somme. Now, Jack Ford is 
in many ways a younger version of Horatio or Horry, who himself was a sergeant in the army and a man who worked very hard to become an industrialist and millionaire. Everything that Jack aspires to. Jack and the Seaton family provide the bedrock of the show. Initially, Jack plans to marry their daughter, school teacher Jessie Seaton, played by Louise Jameson, who is James Bolam's real life wife, even today. But the engagement is off when Jack gets Dolly pregnant, Dolly being the sister of his best friend, Matt Headley. Jessie remains Jack's lost love right up until the end of series four. However, after Jack's betrayal, she marries the gentle and respectable headmaster, Arthur Ashton. They're not particularly well matched, and it's not a total shock when it is revealed in series four that Jessie has deserted Arthur and her three children to become a fervent communist and socialite. Other important characters in the show are Tom Seaton, the likeable but sometimes plodding widower who ends up marrying Dolly. And there is insecure Dolly herself who leaves Jack for Tom following a miscarriage, which for her means a potential lifetime of childlessness. We come to Billy Seaton, the youngest member of the Seaton clan. A committed and hot-headed socialist, Billy is the first person in his family to go to university, studying to be a doctor. Always one to put principles ahead of common sense, Billy graduates and works at a free clinic in Gallo Shield. More often than not, Billy becomes infuriated with Jack who he increasingly sees as a class traitor and unrepentant capitalist. Billy eventually becomes a communist and he and Jack's paths cross for the final time at the end of series four, when Billy's unreasonable grudge against Jack leads him to participate in a plan that inadvertently leads to Jack's death in Spain. Throughout the show, Jack Ford remains a complex and magnetic focus, but not without his faults. A less savoury side of Jack is revealed when he makes arrangements for securing a divorce for his wife Dolly so that she can marry Tom Seaton and be the mother of Tom's child from a former marriage, which means so much to her as she believes she has a lifetime of childness ahead of her. Although apparently magnanimous in losing Dolly to Tom, Jack seems to revel in the slowness and missteps encountered to secure the divorce. Yes, Jack Ford is a man of his word, but that doesn't mean he's not going to let people sweat a bit to reassert his authority in a situation where he's clearly the loser. In series two to three, Jack becomes more wealthy and better connected. The action sometimes moving out of the poverty of Gallo Shield and into the Royal Saracen Hotel, local stately homes and meeting the aristocracy. He befriends the Duke of Bedlington and his daughter Caroline Summers, with whom Jack has an on-off relationship. The social climbing continues towards the capital, London, which features increasingly in series three and four. Despite moving in higher circles, Jack and fellow soldier and comrade in arms, Matt Headley, share a strong bond, and Matt becomes Jack's assistant at the Fitters Union. Matt goes on to marry Sarah, an ambitious and clever woman who keeps Matt on his toes. Even while Matt is alive, there is a certain spark between Jack and Sarah, both perhaps recognising a kindred spirit. Social class, politics, especially the Labour Party and socialism, and world events drive many of the plots in When the Boat Comes In. 
such as in the first episode shell-shocked victims of World War I, then we have the rise of the IRA, the decline in shipbuilding in the 1920s as Britain disarms following the Great War, and the Great Depression that followed the Wall Street crash of 1929. Series 4 deals with the rise of fascism, communism and the Spanish Civil War, a war which sets the backdrop for the Series 4 finale. No appreciation of when the boat comes in would be complete without a word on James Bolam. James Bolam is surely my favourite UK TV character actor, uh, certainly from the years of my youth. He rose to prominence in the 1960s on another northeastern show, a comedy called The Likely Lads, where he starred alongside Rodney Bewes. Then, as the 60s turned to the 70s and the advent of colour television, uh, a rewrite or um, an update of that show called Whatever Happened to the Likely Lads was a huge hit, easily surpassing the original. This surely made James Bolam and Rodney Bewes household names. So, in 1976, with a Likely Lads film uh, being made for cinema, there was surely no bigger character actor on UK TV than James Bolam. And in my view, When the Boat Comes In is the absolute summit of his achievements on television. I'm sure the show would have been good without James Bolam, but in so many ways the show is James Bolam. James Bolam somehow is Jack Ford. Such a complicated, often heroic, but sometimes infuriating, hard-headed character. James Bolam is simply brilliant. And if you're not a fan of his, I can almost guarantee that you will be once you have watched this show. So that's my review of series one to three and look out soon for my video where I devote some time to series four. If you've enjoyed this and if you've enjoyed what I'm doing here at Great Western, please consider becoming a subscriber, maybe like this video or start a debate about this show in the comments below. Either way, I'd be absolutely delighted and I really value your support. So thank you very much and look out for that Series 4 video coming soon. Thanks for watching Great Western. Bye bye. Come hear me little Jackie, no I've smoked me bucky, have a bit of cracky till the boat comes in. Dance to the daddy sing, to the mummy dance, to the daddy, to the mummy sing. Thou shalt have the fishy on a little dishy, thou shalt have the fishy when the boat comes in.